The S&P 500 index fund, is it a good financial independence vehicle? Let's cash in. Finance for the everyday millennial. Hard charging solutions. We provide an accelerant in the journey towards financial independence. It can be difficult to decide how to invest to achieve financial independence. You have employer plans, most of which offer some sort of a match, which offers excellent tax savings and is a tangible asset that provides you with a better sense of security. And the list goes on and on. If you find all of these options to be a little overwhelming, you're not alone. Most people do not want to spend endless hours researching investments. Instead, they want a product with stability combined with growth so that they can reach their goals. The most common fund available is one that you've probably heard a lot about. That is the S&P 500 Index Fund. This is the most common indication of how the U.S. stock market is performing. But what is the S&P 500 Index Fund? Is it a good place to invest your money? Let's take a look at what it is and if it's worth adding to your portfolio. First, an index fund is simply a way to track the progress of the stock market. The S&P 500 is an index that mirrors how the 500 largest publicly traded companies are performing just as the Dow Jones Industrial Average tracks 30 of the largest blue chip companies. Because the S&P 500 index accounts for 80% of the market value, it's widely looked to as the best single gauge of the market. Investing in the S&P provides you with an easy way to track the progress of your portfolio, which is why it's considered to be a passive form of investing. This fund is not actively managed by someone looking to beat the market like most mutual funds, but instead is designed to mirror the performance of the market. Due to their passive management, you can own it for very little cost. For example, a Vanguard S&P 500 index fund only charges 0.3% or $300 per year for each million dollars invested. How does the S&P 500 index fund work? It's pretty simple. If you invest in the fund, you'll own shares of all 500 companies that make up the index. Those companies can and do change if the S&P 500 adds or drops new companies. It's also worth noting that the S&P 500 index fund is fairly diversified. It has investments spread out among 11 major industries with no sector having more than 30% of the money invested. Limiting the allocations to sectors is reassuring when funds are heavily invested in sectors like financials, industrials, technology, healthcare, and so on. This provides investors with immediate broad market diversification without having to do much homework. Here's a look at the different sectors. First, we have tech at around 27% of the total index. Then we have healthcare at 14%, then consumer discretionaries at 10%, which is made up of companies like Netflix, Disney, and Starbucks. The fourth largest sector is communication services. At number five, it's financials, such as PayPal, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. Six is industrials, which is a company like Caterpillar, Boeing, and 3M. Number seven is a consumer staple such as Procter & Gamble, Costco, and CVS. Number eight is utilities. Number nine is real estate. Tenth is energy, which includes Marathon and Valero. And lastly, at number 11 is materials, which produce metals, chemicals, and construction materials. One major advantage of this index is that each company must meet certain criteria to be included. They're analyzed by the U.S. Index Committee to ensure they meet certain financial health measures. To be eligible for the S&P 500 index inclusion, a company should be a U.S. company, have a market capitalization of at least $8.2 billion, earnings must be positive in its most recent quarters, Additionally, the company's stock must be traded at a reasonable price and have been publicly traded for at least 12 months. So, should you invest in the S&P 500 index fund? Let's look at the pros and cons. The fund will provide you with an average rate of return of about 8 to 10 percent annually. The expense ratio is the lowest because it is passively managed, and you can gauge how your portfolio is doing by looking at most financial news as it is tracked by all of them. The cons 
are the potential opportunity costs of not investing in something with faster growth. A good growth stock fund outperforms the S&P 500. If you're interested in outperforming the market, it's possible to do that with a reliable growth stock fund. These funds select the highest growth companies from the S&P 500. By purchasing a fund such as this, you receive the diversification in the stable companies that are found within the index, but you only own the fastest growers. Vanguard's S&P 500 growth fund holds 283 growth stocks that are chosen from the S&P 500, but more than half of the fund's allocation are technology companies, providing the opportunity for excellent growth with a little higher risk. You also have exposure to other sectors held within the index like smaller amounts of utilities, real estate, financials, and others that grow at a slower rate. The S&P 500 return was just under 14% over the last 10 years. While that's not bad for a bull market period, it doesn't keep pace with growth stock funds. Even in a bull market year like 2019, the S&P 500 return was a little better than 31%, while the best growth stock funds were returning more than 40%. Although more aggressive growth funds may perform worse during bear markets, the long-term returns will more than likely be higher. As always, the variables that must be considered when you decide to invest will depend on your age, how much money you need to achieve financial independence, your personal risk tolerance, and a variety of other factors. Regardless, owning the S&P 500 could be a great place to park your money for those who don't know much about investing or who are just beginning to invest and haven't explored all of their options. Generally, you'll be investing for a long period of time. It's recommended to go with something like a good growth fund that is a little more aggressive, provided it's properly diversified. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's always a good time to cash in with cash in.